Today in the shop, I'm going to continue my inspection of Casper's engine. This is really important, particularly if you have the OM617 turbo diesel engine. You know, this is with that old famous Mercedes diesel engine. But there are some problems and they're related to the right side of the engine. And the only way you can inspect that area is to remove the air filter housing. This is typical of the air filter housings that were mounted on the engine from 1978 to 1984 in the U.S. market. So the only way you can do this inspection is you have to remove this housing here. You have to get it off the engine. And I'm going to show you now a number of things that you want to inspect while you have this housing off the engine. Now, if you've got one of these cars and you haven't pulled the housing in a couple years, I recommend you do it because indeed there are a couple things down in there that could cause great problems if not caught early. And I'm gonna demonstrate that in this video. So now that I've got that off, let's go in with a camera right down in here and I'm gonna start pointing out the things you wanna take a really close look at if you have one of these engines. From my experience working around these older OM617 turbo diesel engines over the last 20 years, I found there are two things that will destroy the engine. It may not cause catastrophic failure, but it will cause these typical problems that you might see with these higher mileage diesels, and that is excessive blow-by, low compression, excessive oil consumption, lots of engine smoke, and <laughs> lack of power. And that's because the piston rings wear prematurely. Now, I have seen a number of these engines wear out at under 200,000 miles. Yeah, that's right. You'll hear it all the time. Oh, these engines will go a million miles. No, they won't. Not if they're not maintained properly. And I guarantee you, you'll have a hard time reaching 300,000 miles if these two areas right here are neglected. And one of them is oil changes. Now, I'm not going to go over that in this video, but I will be doing a separate video here in the near future talking about the importance of oil changes, particularly on older diesel engines. That's extremely important. The other thing is air leaks, air intake leaks in the system, which will allow dirt and dust to get into the combustion chambers. Now, any dirt or dust that gets in there is going to get on the cylinder walls and that up and down motion at very high speed is going to wear the rings and score the cylinder walls. I, I tell you, you, you might think, oh, he's making too big a deal out about this. I've opened up enough of these diesel engines where the whole engine is in pretty good condition except the cylinder walls and the piston rings. Once again, I'm going to show that in detail in a future video. So you need to make very sure that you're doing religious oil changes on these engines and you also need to make sure that there are no air leaks in and around the air filter housing and this part right here. Now you may think, well, I've got a brand new filter, so I'm not going to have any problem. Not so. <laughs> you can't believe how many air filter housings I've pulled off these engines only to find that the two seals, particularly one seal, this is a top seal, has been pushed back and the clamp was tightened down and guess what? There is no protection, there is no seal. So you have air being sucked in right through this edge of the housing here. Now take a look, here's what happens. This is because of the design of the seal itself. It's very hard to put the seal on and push this on without the seal getting pushed back. Look at this, I just removed this from Casper here and look at how the seal on the bottom has been pushed back. Once again, I would say in more than 70% of the elbows that I pull off these engines, this top seal has been pushed back. And the bottom seal, because of the heat from the turbo, gets really hard. It gets super hard, and I'm going to show you that here in a second. And it won't seal either. So because of the compressor of the turbocharger, it's sucking a lot of air. And with the restriction of the air filler, if there's any leaks in and around this elbow, guess what? Unfiltered air is getting sucked right into the turbocharger and it's going right into the intake manifold and into the combustion chambers. So this is something right here that a lot of people don't realize how important this is. And you need to look at this. If you've got one of these and you've never taken this off and looked at it, you need to look at these seals right here. You need to take a good close look at the breather fittings, all the breather fittings from the valve cover into 
The air filter housing need to be tight and soft. And if not, you need to fix this. Don't drive the car until this is fixed. Now, this is a very poor design, this lip right here. And I have a video on my website which will show you how to modify this intake elbow so that when you take the air filter housing on and off and this clamp this down, you are not going to push this top seal back. Now, we have brand new seals on my website. And I'm going to show you now just how bad that seal is where it connects to the turbo inlet. Take a look at this lower seal. This is the one that clamps onto the compressor housing inlet. Most of the time, this seal will come right off when you pull the intake elbow off. But look, it's frozen. It's literally stuck. It's so hard, you can't even indent it when you push on it with a fingernail. So I'm going to have to take a, a pry tool. and Let's see if we can slide this, this off. Yeah, there, there it comes. Look at that. There it is. Look at how hard that is. Maybe if I squeeze it, it'll just break. Yeah, see that? And that, once again, illustrates what I was talking about earlier in this series, the importance of plastic and rubber parts needing to be replaced after 25 years. So let me show you what these new seals look like. We do carry these on our website. This is the one, look at how pliable that is. And that will allow good clamping down tight so you get no air intake leaks. And here's that troublesome top seal with this groove. And it's the problem with this groove that makes it so hard to slip on without getting pushed back into that upper part of the elbow. So be sure and check out my website for this video on how to modify the elbow. I'll put a link below in the description of this video. Anytime you remove the air filter housing and that intake elbow, you want to look for potential oil leaks in and around the turbocharger. There's two areas. This here is the oil inlet to the turbocharger. And there's a gasket right here. And if you look now, it looks pretty wet. Uh, it's just starting to leak. Now, you can get a wrench on these, make sure these two bolts are tight. And I've already done that and they're tight. So I'm going to need to replace this gasket. If you look down below here, right down in here, you can see the wetness and particularly the oil wetness on the Motor mount, the rubber motor mount, is now deteriorated due to this minor oil leak. The other area is this tube coming out. This is the oil outlet tube from the turbocharger. goes right into the pan, and it has a couple seals, and those will harden, and this will start to leak. Usually you get dripping oil in that uh, right front corner of the pan. So this is okay. This looks good, but I've got a little leak here I've got to attend to. If you don't attend to these leaks when they just start seeping, they'll become much larger leaks. Once again, an example of what happens with uh, gaskets over time, as well as rubber and plastic. You have paper gaskets that harden with age and they lose their seals. So we're going to do that now, and then we should have a really nice clean engine. doesn't look like there's any oil leaks up around the front crank seal. So I'm pretty happy with what I'm finding here. But this will give you a good example on a very old car. Even if it's been quote unquote well maintained or maintained by a dealer, a lot of times you'll find little things like this that have been missed. I'm going to take this opportunity to also inspect this radiator coolant short hose. We call this the short hose. This hose is typical on almost all of these older diesels. It's that short section of hose that goes between the thermostat housing and the water pump housing located down here. This is often neglected. I think some shops probably don't even know this exists. And you'll take a look at this and it'll be cracked up along this edge and very worn and maybe even swollen. Now this one looks like it's been replaced. I can tell from the clamps and the condition of the hose this has probably been replaced and you also may have a problem of corrosion if you see any corrosion coming out of the hose that means there's corrosion going on in the nipples of these housings and i have a video that shows you how to clean those up and reseal those if you've got corrosion in there and don't take care of it it'll get worse to the point where these hoses will start to leak both here and here anywhere you have rubber clamped down onto one of these aluminum housings you have the potential of corrosion in here particularly if the radiator coolant has not been maintained properly. So we have a kit on my website, which includes a short section of hose, the two clamps, the new gasket. We've got some aviation permatex to seal this gasket, which is located right up in here. You'll have to remove 
the thermostat housing to replace this short hose and this kit comes with complete instructions. But at least for this car, I don't need to replace this at this time. Of course, anytime you have one of these air filters off an OM617 turbo diesel engine, you want to inspect this bracket. I mean, look, this is a new bracket. This is a new OE bracket and you can tell from the parts tag it's not been on the engine very long, but look at over here, it's already broken, and someone has come in here and made a metal bracket. Now that's a pretty good repair. They've had to get a longer mount over here, but all in all, this repair is probably pretty permanent because he's got a really strong, heavy strap there. This is the area that breaks, and it breaks because the metal on the factory bracket is too thin. Now we offer an aftermarket bracket which is made of a much thicker metal. And we even take this bracket into our shop and beef it up by doing extra wells right here and extra wells in there and in there. So when you install this bracket, you're not gonna have to worry about this breaking like you do the originals. And along with the bracket, we include in our kit, you know, new mounts and lock washers. It's very important when you install the air cleaner housing back onto these rubber mounts that you use locking nuts because if they don't you'll start to get vibration and these will loosen up and then it will elongate the holes just like you see here in the air filter housing if you get elongated holes you're going to have to use washers when you tighten it back down onto these rubber mounts i thought this one was in pretty good shape but i just grabbed it and it just broke right off so when you do have the air filter housing off just take a hold of these rubber shock mounts and wiggle them. This one is getting pretty weak too, but this one, look at that, it just broke right off and that's very typical. We have heat shields that you can purchase on my website. These are metal heat shields that protect these rubber mounts from heat. That's the primary reason why they'll fail and break like you saw here. So I'm going to install a new bracket. I'm gonna put new mounts. I'm gonna get the heat shields and I can expect to not have to deal with this again for a long time to come. If you've been following my videos on older Mercedes, you know how I feel about the voltage regulators. This is the only thing that has left me stranded on the freeway my entire life. And I'm going to inspect this car before I drive it any further because you don't know when these are going to fail. You might get a little indication as it starts to lose contact with the commutator and you'll get intermittent electrical problems like slow moving wipers and a weak radio and all of a sudden if you have a gas car the engine will quit if you have a diesel you can keep driving but the next time you go to try to start it the battery will be dead so i'm going to take the voltage regulator off it's located right on the back of the alternator here and i'm going to inspect it now it's held on by two screws. Normally I would go from underneath the car to get to this, but since I already have the air filter housing and the intake elbow on this turbo diesel removed, I can use a right angle ratcheting screwdriver like this. And I'm gonna go down and remove these two screws. And we're gonna see what this looks like. <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me. More than half the times I remove one of these, it's, it's worn out. Let's see what Casper's looks like here, okay? Oh boy, look at that. <laughs> another one. Here is another one where the brushes are worn down to where very soon they will not be making contact and you'll lose all charging to the battery. Now here's what a new one looks like. So you can kind of compare as you see the brushes on a new one in comparison to the worn one. You know, if you pull this out and the brushes maybe are, you know, at least half, I would say just save it and put it in the trunk for a spare. But this one I'm not even going to save. I'm going to install this new voltage regulator and I can have peace of mind probably for at least the next 10 years. So we have these available on my website, high quality Monarch voltage regulators still made in Germany. And they come with instructions on how to install these so you do not damage the brushes. So Casper is going to get a new voltage regulator today. Well, you can see I have my work cut out for me this morning, but other than those motor mounts, now I'm gonna have to replace the motor mounts. I kind of knew that when I bought the car because I could feel the vibration, particularly on engine shutdown. 
But I'm not going to worry about motor mounts now. We're going to do those on the lift, and I'll shoot a video when we get around to that job. But I do want to do a, a valve adjustment. Now is a good time to do it since I've kind of got the air filter off and I've got a little more room to work. So we'll probably do the valve adjustment here either tomorrow or later in the week. So these jobs I've shown you though this morning aren't going to take very long. By noon I'll have this all wrapped up. And just keep in mind these are great DIY jobs. If you haven't worked on a car before and you have one of these old diesels you might want to give some of these a try. One thing is you're going to save a lot of money and you're also going to know that the job gets done right.